Also, I know what your plan is for this episode. I know why you came up with this idea, by the way. Why? Because you're desperate to be showrunner, and you want to show any BBC execs that are listening that you can create a good episode. Exactly. Exa- that's the whole point. I'm still wor- it's, a, it's been, what, a 10-year campaign for Crispy for showrunner? And then this Russell T. Davis guy, what has he done for Doctor Who? Just comes absolutely in and Absolutely nothing, mate, honestly. Absolutely, absolutely nothing. nothing. Mark Warren had it on with a paving slab once, and that's Russell T. Davies' claim to fame. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we love you, Russell, but let's have Crispy be the showrunner. Come on. Come on. You got Thank you got you. you got to prove you can write more than one episode though. So today I'm going to be going to be judging you harshly, you know? Let, let's let's right, see what you can right. create, all right? And Bring everyone at it. home, I'm going to be judging him harshly. So why don't we uh, why don't we get into it and roll the intro and see exactly what you can cook up? Sounds good. All right, roll it. Hello and welcome back to Who's There, a Doctor Who podcast, the show where two YouTubers get together and talk about Doctor Who. I'm your host, Troy, also known as Red Archer Live, and with me today is the man who's definitely campaigned to be showrunner with his Elton John glasses there tucked safely into his shirt. It's Crispy Pro. How are you doing, buddy? Oh, I am very, very good. How are you, Troy? Those are so Elton John-esque. It's ridiculous. I know. Like, you I found really, them in like, an Uber. You are still standing for showrunner at the end of the day. Correct, correct. The, the, the campaign is not dead, my friends. Um, it will never die. Be an example of that. It will never die. Hashtag crispy for even, even when you die, I'll, I'll deliver word. your even eulogy and I'll be like, you know what? <laughs> even though he might not be here anymore, he's still got all those ideas. Make crispy showrunner. Come on, do it. Thank you. Thank you. I really do appreciate that, Troy. But that's the only time we will discuss your death ever again because it's not a reality we want to talk about. No, absolutely not. What are we talking Apart about? Apart from Troy? when you annoy me. Sometimes I'm thinking about oh. it then, but. Oh, oh, oh my. <laughs> Praying on your downfall. <laughs> no, um, today, well, today's your episode idea, isn't it, buddy? Which is kind of weird it that I'm the one doing the intro for your episode idea. It's how oh, strange it's how things work out, isn't it? the way the cookie crumbles. It? Yeah, mm-hmm, that's the way mm-hmm. the cookie crumbles. So why don't you take the reins and tell us what we're doing today, Mr. Pro Frisbee? Oh, I would love to. So there was a website I found ages ago, um, and it does this game called Mad Libs, which is a very, very popular game. It's been, um, you know, used forever. And you just get a bunch of nouns and adjectives and uh, all these other various things. And you fill them in and it creates a story with these keywords that you fill in. And I thought it'd be hilarious if we did some Doctor Who related. And it's been great to see that some of you guys have actually participated because we asked you guys last week um, and we actually got some responses, which is awesome. So thank you very very much um and so yeah we're gonna do a bit of that and the rest of the episode we're actually gonna have a serious conversation if troy and i were to ever actually run the show maybe run a couple episodes um what we would do for the show so that's the that's the that's the go for today and i'm very excited because you know it's just good it's just good vibes it is just good it might be the only episode we release this week as well i mean we haven't really talked too much about (gasps) it but it depends on how long this episode is, but we're going to try and record a bonus episode after this for Thor Love and Thunder, because we want to talk yeah. about it. I don't even know what Absolutely. he thinks of the film. I haven't got a clue. I haven't asked him for good reason, because I, I want yeah. to wait. Because like, I think he up. knows how I feel, because he's probably seen all my tweets yeah. about it. But I do know how Troy feels. I haven't, I haven't <laughs> seen any of Crispy's opinions, so I'm excited mm. for that. So let's mm. see if we can we can actually stay on topic with this episode and get it done in the time we've planned, and then maybe we can record a bonus we episode. We could do it. We could do it. Because if we do, I was hoping we could get it up. It'd be tomorrow for us. I was hoping we could get it out before this episode of Doctor Who goes live. This, oh. this episode of the podcast. So yeah. you'll know if it's already come out by this point. You'll know. You'll know. That's going to be the fun thing. All right. Yeah. Let's do it. It's a challenge. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Let's do it. It's a speed run, any percent. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be talking about that in a separate episode, provided we have the time. But yes, we're gonna be looking at making our own episode of Doctor Who today. And before we get into it, we have got a poll, which I want to to recap oh, with yes. you all. Oh yes. So last week in episode 17 of the podcast, I asked you in the poll, who do you think Jodie Whittaker will regenerate into in the Centenary special? Your options being either Shuti Gatwa or David Tennant. Crispy, out of 20 votes, would you hazard a guess as to who's come out on top in the poll and by how much? Before I give the results, uh, play a fun game. If you if you asked me in January this year, I would have said, uh, well, we wouldn't, we didn't know who Shooty Gatwa was at the time. But anyway, if the, the whole David Tennant thing seemed ridiculous. Um, but now I get the strange sense that David Tennant has won the poll by quite a bit. 
maybe 80 maybe 80 percent 80 percent is that too hard okay well uh shooty gatwa has uh 15 of the vote and david tennant has 85 percent of the vote (laughs) so 85 percent of our listeners think that david tennant is going to appear at the end of the centenary if someone does i mean it's possible we could get a fade to black this is in the eventuality that we do see the face yeah Mm. which we might not so if we do 85 percent of people think it'll be david tennant which i agree with I think it will be. Yeah, I agree with Sue. I think it's going to happen. We, we said it last week. Happen. It seems like the the right way to go with it, at least personally. Yeah. I don't know. It just seems like a good way to do it. Um, so that's the the poll. And then as for the news, very briefly, oh. um, or should we, should we talk about the next episode before we talk about the news? Which way around do you want to do it? We planned um, you know it so well. Let's let's give the people the news first, and then we let's can go into formalities. News. All right, let's go into it. All right, all right, all right. Let's do that, let's do that. So we only have a tiny bit of news. It's only just something we want to touch on very briefly because as luck would have it, we tend to record the podcast earlier in the week so I have more time to spin it around because I'm getting busier over weekends at the minute. Um, but when we recorded our episode, right after we'd finished and got off the call, I saw a ping that said, Russell T. Davies is appearing on The One Show tonight talking about Doctor yep. Who. And I was like... Oh no! Oh oh no! <laughs> oh no! I mean, I knew it wasn't going to spoil any actual episodes because that's not Russell's uh, mo- like you know his um, motif. It's not motif. What's the word? Mo. 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 Thank you. Thank you. You helped my yeah. my, my brain <laughs> fart there. Um, but he did mention during that episode of the one show, at, like about five hours, six, seven hours after we recorded, that. Uh, he has seen the Centenary special, the final version, and once final again cut. reiterated that the final cut is 90 minutes. So Woo! we we had our little doubts for you, and you made you made, oh, you yeah! did you kind of went imagine if 10, 20 minutes were cut, and I was like hopefully not. Seems like they haven't no. been. Seems like we've got a solid 90 minutes. I am good so stuff. excited. Very, I am very so good happy that that's the case, and the fact that he said final cut, you know, it it means that you know it's been locked off. It's ready exactly. to go. It's ready exactly. to push out. Exactly. So. Exactly. So there's your, there's your little bit of let's little bit of news. So uh, let's mm-hmm. just uh, what what we're going to do is we've got four responses on Anchor for making our own episode of Doctor Who. So we'll read those out a little bit later alongside the uh, Mad Libs answers that you guys submitted, uh, and then we'll also try and have a look at some YouTube comments at the end. Because like I said, I want to try and do that a little bit. But just before we get into talking about our own episode of Doctor Who, what are we doing next week, Crispy? What's next week's episode going to be, and how is that going to link to our Q and A? Oh, I'll tell you what, you know, I think next week's going to be a rather underrated episode of the podcast. I'll tell you that much, mate. I'll tell you that much for free. Uh, So, no, we're going to be talking about the most underrated episode of Doctor Who. That's what we're going to be finding out. That's what we're going to be finding out. Troy and I are going to find the definitive most underrated episode of the modern era of Doctor Who. I have an idea as to which one's going to win, but I won't tell you now. I'll save it for next week. Mm. Um but yeah, so that's that's going to be the the Q and A for this week, Troy. Yeah, we're going to try and debate some of the mo- some of the most underrated ones. Maybe pick out a winner. See see how we go from there, and it's going to be a good time. Mm. So the Q and A this week on Spotify, and also let us know on the YouTube comments if you want to comment there as well. But mainly the Spotify Q and A, best place to answer these things. What do you think, in your opinion, is the most underrated episode of Doctor Who? Ideally, modern era because we can't really talk with much about the classic era. We probably should because we're clarify silly. Clarify that. I don't believe there are going to be many people that would jump for the classic era anyway, knowing us too and what we're like but Mm -hmm. for clarity and you can have multiple episodes if you think there's several underrated ones but if you do try and pick out the most the most underrated out of them in your opinion just so we can have a bit of an idea where you will where you will stand on it so that could be a fun time i think next week and that'll be good absolutely absolutely also speaking of news i mean it's not exactly relevant to doctor who but it it kind of is have you seen the trending like tiktok slash twitter video and all that of is it joseph quinn is that his name from stranger things yeah comic the guy that plays eddie yeah yeah i did that is we should probably give context, but um, he was at London Film at Comic Con, so the the main version of the one that I went to to meet Jodie Whittaker in February, where I commented that Showmasters, while they put on a good show, their organisation was not very good. They treated Jodie like a circus monkey, throwing her around the place at five or six months pregnant. So I had my very clear issues with that con. I was planning to go to the big one and then decided against it because I had other stuff going on and I wanted to save money. Um, but apparently there have been a bunch of different things of people hearing that staff are moaning about Joe Quinn. He was he was doing one whole day. He had chance for one break and he took a little bit longer. And apparently people were calling him very offensive words behind the scenes. They were rushing him along, telling him he couldn't personalize autographs. Sound familiar? Uh, and then people were trying <laughs> to get hugs off him. They were like, no, 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 trying to shove more signings in his face. Like they were really just like shoving him around and it was his first convention. And then there was a TikTok trending during... He had a talk on the Sunday. I think he was there for both days, uh, Saturday yeah. and Sunday. 
So both days, I think there was a Friday as well, whatever. On the Sunday, he had a talk and like someone asked a question, but they went, it's not a question. I just wants to basically say, you know, we're sorry if, if what we've heard is true about your experience. We all really love you. We all relate to Eddie, blah, 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 and give this big, long speech. And like I said, I think it has about 4 million likes on TikTok or it's something now. It's got a lot it's of ridiculous. views. ridiculous. Millions of views. Um, and he was basically just crying at the end of it, which... Like, bless yeah. him, that is so... Like, I can't... I, like, I really hope what I heard wasn't true, but knowing how Jodie was treated, it doesn't seem that surprising. There are people at Showmasters that are lovely. Like, I heard about the, the woman who was working with Yas, uh, Yasmin. I always go to call her Yasmin. With Mandy <laughs> Gill, especially on the Sunday when Jodie wasn't there. She was lovely. There are definitely staff members there who are lovely, but it just seems like the organisation attitude of a good portion just isn't very good. And the organisation, just, just the Comic Con generally, they keep overselling things. Like, yeah. again, it was, it was a case of if you didn't get the Diamond Pass, you were screwed. Like it's nah, just it's ridiculous. It's, it's daft. Because I and had a he, friend. He who was getting me. a he. Sorry, I, I was just going to no, say no, he no, got no. in trouble. F- he got in trouble for spending too long with the the fans at the signings. That's that yeah. was the one of the big things. And like, come on, as you just said, like it's one of his first like massive conventions since Stranger Things has come out, or like ever. Um, I don't know. I feel sorry for the guy. I feel sorry Same for here. the guy, and that's absolutely that's the thing with should him not be the way they're treated. Like, it's both of their like first Comic Con appearances, isn't it? Yeah. So, like, it's not a good first impression for either of them. And, and the showmasters no. have said both times, you know, Jody really loved their, 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 her time. Eddie really loved, uh, Joe really loved his time. Did they? Do, like, do we know I that for know. sure? It's like, Ugh. but no, I had a, I had a friend message me. I remember a few weeks ago saying, I want to go to meet him. Like, you know, what do you know about this comic con? And I was like, right, I'll give you, I'll give you <laughs> honest, serious advice. Said, get a diamond pass or don't bother. And I told her about what happened with mm. Jodie Whittaker. I was like, if he's got a diamond pass, get that. Otherwise, you will be in trouble. And she, when she asked me, I see we were talking about it. And she went, honestly, if you, you, you hadn't told me to get a diamond pass, I would have been screwed. I was just like, that's wow. just, it's it's just it's not shocking. good yeah, how it's, it's organized. Good. It's and it's, it stands by what I've said even further, that I'm not going to go unless there's some big guess that it's worth the, the hassle for. And even then, I shouldn't. I shouldn't support it. I don't want to. And honestly, I might consider not going altogether if they announce someone big. It depends. Because then it's not just their cons. They'll get people to you. I mean, David Tennant went to Wales instead thankfully yeah like yeah whales are much better with that stuff you know obviously there's some like kind of timing issues when you've got a lot of people trying to queue for something but never had any of the trouble at wales comic con that i did with london with london with showmasters it's just not a good look for them and i hope that they they improve things soon you know i hope they they fix it and, and do better because and stop over catering yeah honestly yeah. it's just it's no good it's no good it should yeah. be a, a fun experience and not just let's make as much money as we can i know they're a business but mm. there's got to be a limit you know what i mean absolutely so that, that's been your who's there serious message of the week thank you for listening yeah really no, really you. like yeah. we really got serious, serious there yeah Whoa. Well, i was like i don't know the, the, we can touch on uh serious topics and this is something we're very passionate about and you know these are, we, we at the end of the day we forget that these celebrities are real people so it's just kind of a gentle mm. reminder that hey you know if they don't, if they don't get a break during the day and they get in trouble i don't know it's not a good look it's not it's not a good look at all it's really really sucky and just I feel for them. I really do. I really, really do. So, yeah. no, it's just not nice. It's not nice at all. But uh, should we move on and talk about making our own episode? Oh, please. Let's do it. Let's do okay, it. Okay, so we're going to start by talking about what we do personally and then have a go of Mad Libs, right? Mm-hmm. All right, so, Crispy for Showrunner, this is your chance to, to pitch your own ideas. All right, so, what would you do if you were given the opportunity to make your own episode of Doctor Who? Give me, give me some pointers. We're not asking for like a 50 minute so, plot because I don't imagine either of us have got that, but... <laughs> no. Okay, so this is just an episode. We're not doing like full tenure on if the show. If you've got a full tenure plan, throw it at me. I'm here for not it. Re- uh, I don't know. I like I like the idea. If I were to do a tenure, I'd like um, to do six seasons, two Doctors. That would be fun. I think right, that's Moffat. what I would like to do. A bit of a Moffat move. Very much a Moffat move. Um, and my first series... Stick with the one companion. Second series, bring in another companion, but they are not from Earth. <gasps> I want them to be an alien. Give me back my that human! To- yeah, yeah, exactly. That's going exactly. to be the next catchphrase now. It's going to be my next mm-hmm. catchphrase. Just carve an Easter, give me back my human. Yeah, carve an Easter. <laughs> oh, no. He's changing. He's changing You've his catchphrases. You've dabbled with podcast jokes. Now meet the... <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Um, I'll shut up. But yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. You're good. Um... <laughs> So I think I'd do that and then oh gosh. I had I wrote an entire document about maybe two years ago and I was oh. going to do like a crispy for showrunner video. I'm just remembering this now. I don't know where that document is. But in, in your documents it some, maybe. It had some 
Well, I've had all these different computers since then, so I don't know where. Why are you justifying that terrible joke with a response? Why are you justifying that with a response? Oh, what did what did you what did you say? I said it was a document. I said it was probably in your document. So I was making a computer joke. It was oh, really bad. Nice. It was absolutely nice. awful, and you humoured it, nice. and it makes me feel like an idiot. Oh, okay. so thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, you wrote a whole but, document. That's so cool. I do. I do. I'll, I'll have to um, find it somewhere. I will make that video one day. The crispy for showrunner video. The joke's been going on too long that I actually will make. What if I was showrunner? Do it and do a proper like. Just maybe do a Chris Chibnall nineteen eighty whatever year it was style video. Going you know, yeah, and less running down <laughs> corridors. Monsters aren't yeah. quite you know like you, know, you have get show off your ideas. Show what you can do, man. That can, that can be the the opening uh, skit. I'll just do a like frame by frame recreation of <laughs> that. <laughs> oh, that would be brilliant. Um, That'd be so good. But I think I would very much, and people might not be a fan of this, but I like love the timey-wimey stories and things not necessarily happening in the right chronological order. So, for my first three series, I would make it so that the events at the end were actually the start and the, what you saw at the start were actually the end of those events. Oh, so like thing. Moffat's plan with Tenant for series five. Yes, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Which actually we should clarify, that. I don't know if everyone knows that, but Moffat did clar- suggest to David Tennant at one point, he was like, if you stay on for my first series, here's the idea. And he would have it. Yeah. Well, it wasn't it that David Tennant would crash in Amelia's backyard about to regenerate. Yeah, but some, that was something after like that. a whole series of adventures with grown up Amelia, and it was kind of like grown a up Amy. It's a weird little loop yeah. type thing. He, yeah, it kind of it's kind of what he did in like series uh, six, I guess. I think that's what it kind of like adapted to. Um but mine necessarily wouldn't revolve around a regeneration. It would just be some kind of big yeah. plot point um, that so would that be, be a building third up series for three or? series. Yeah, okay, yeah. There, yeah, three Yeah. Three series, and then probably do the same thing again, you know, <laughs> rinse, reuse, recycle, you know. <laughs> Maybe pick a really doctor that's a bit it. older that really starts off really it. grumpy and then he, he lightens up towards the end, you know, and yeah. then everyone's like, oh, he's a big fluffy teddy bear. Much like Capaldi. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, it does seem familiar. Hmm. That's very strange. Yeah. It's very mm-hmm. strange. Mm-hmm. But if you were to nail it down to one episode, p- pitch me an episode. One episode. Okay, you want an episode? All right, here we go. The Doctor and Companion arrive on Earth in the year 2032. So, 10 years from now. <gasps> and it's just a social commentary on everything and everyone hates it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's the entire pitch. I mean, to no, be no, fair, no. it's Russell T Davies. He could do that and it would work. No, you know? he very like, much would. Like, yeah, no, Russell T absolutely. Davies would do that. He'd steal that idea from you. I mean, I think he did that in a show. I think that literally is just years and years, isn't it? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Um, so, I don't know. I always like the idea of stories doing stuff. Like, I like the idea of a Black Mirror-esque type episode, like kind of what they did with Smile. I really like... The idea of how far humanity can go and give a Doctor Who spin on it. Um, I was going to so, say, so, some know. episodes of Black Mirror would not be Doctor Who adaptable. No, the absolutely not. The one Jodie Whittaker's in, for example. Yeah, no, no, please. And I've seen people make edits to that, by the way. They're not cool, oh, no, guys. Oh, no, anyway. please, please, no. <laughs> clean podcast, not going there. Let's clean just say podcast, things are too hot podcast. for telly on that episode. And yes, yeah, uh, absolutely. If there are edits of that, I don't want to know. I, I've never even considered it. I don't even want to know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. No, no, it's disgusting. I'm sorry I brought it up. Oh. But yes. So, I don't know. It'd probably... My uh, era would be very dark. My <gasps> opening episode would be very dark and gritty, um. but it would still have all the wit and charm that you want. But yeah, I need to flesh out some ideas, obviously. Wow, you should have really fleshed them out before we got to this recording, Crispy. That, that doesn't show well, you very good with your planning as a showrunner. Plan. No, it's a podcast with a plan. It's disgraceful. It's disgraceful. Hey, I'm pretty sure every interview Moffat gave, he was like, oh, I just made it up on the fly. Yeah, which when Chris Chibnall said that, everyone was like, <laughs> eh? what? But with Moffat, what? it's like, Moffat can do no wrong. Actually, that's not true. There are a lot of Moffat haters out there. They have no yeah. taste, but there are Moffat haters out there. No. <laughs> 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 oh, no. I had an idea for mine, right? Since I'm, I'm presuming I can... Are we switching over to me now? Have you got any other yeah, ideas? Yeah, no, please. Okay. For goodness sake. I had one, and that's my doorbell. <laughs> oh, the, Hang on one second. I'm going to leave you to brood and think on that. You carry the episode, and if you don't say anything good, I'll cut it out. Let's find out. Oh, okay. Well, he's definitely going to cut this out. Um, so, I recently ordered um, some food just before the podcast, um, and it's here... And um, any other food, I would have eaten it during the recording, like real subtly. But I ordered noodles 
So it, I feel like noodles will be very loud on the recording. But I ordered some uh, some uh, spicy beef Mongolian noodles, uh, and I'm excited to have them after the recording. But I don't know when we're going to finish this recording because we are going to do a Thor: Love and Thunder uh, review. I just watched it uh, just the other day, and I thought it was all right. I don't think it was as strong as Ragnarok, but it was okay. It was pretty cool. Uh, I, I like a lot of the complaints about it is that there's far too many jokes, and I agree to an extent. Um, but I feel like there's just kind of been like an MCU hate train recently. Some of it's justified, some of it's not. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm excited to have my noodles, and Troy is walking back into the room. Um, and yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for listening, guys. Here's Troy. I'm going to be judging what you said very harshly and finding out, you know, what exactly okay. you discussed and whether okay. it stays in the episode or not. That was, that was a good little interruption there, wasn't it? My idea is doorbell. <laughs> doorbell. <laughs> I forgot my mum arranged for something to be picked up. So that was the postman coming to pick it up because I was like, I'm not having anything delivered. We should be good to record. No. Thanks, mum. Uh, <laughs> so. Classic. Classic. Classic mother, you know? No. So my idea is. Because I've kind of heard this, it's kind of come from a few different ideas I've heard over time, you know, the best ideas are often not our own. Um, but I really like the idea that you have a series, it's kind of like a series slash finale build up. You have a series where a companion, or the companion ideally, if it was just the companion, that'd be really cool because then you'd have the Doctor on their own at the end. But I have a companion through the series who isn't actually like a human, like it's a human companion who isn't a human. It could be like okay. the master. It could be a Slitheen. It could be any kind of like monster that could hide themselves as a human. And throughout the series, you get these little references or they make a comment on things oh. that link to their previous like appearances in Doctor Who. So like if it was a Slitheen at one point, they mentioned, I don't know, Downing Street or another point they mentioned a kid mm-hmm. called Luke or like, you know, the random bits like that. And then at the end, yeah. like, oh, there's a cliffhanger into the finale. It's revealed that they're actually like, this different monster and they've been planning this thing all season. And then the Doctor has to fight it all that's on their own really at the end. That's really cool. That's, that's my idea. That's that I, really yeah, cool. Like, I, I just like the idea that, you know, especially someone that they, 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 like, they trust so much. And, you know, it's often argued that the, some of the better companions are the one-season companions. You know, Bill, Dan, that kind of thing. You know, yeah. like that, that is something people mm. have argued. Like, build a companion up who people like really relate to after that one season. Really and like, and then just Make the references really, really niche. Like, people like me who knew yeah. off the top of my head that there were 17 DVDs in Blink might pick up on them, but, like, you know, general audiences mm. will not notice. It'll be just, like, passing lines of dialogue. So, someone mentioned that. You're grinning at that. Someone mentioned that to me the other no. day. I can't remember who it was. Yeah. But someone... <laughs> oh, it was... Yeah, I was in a Discord call in my server, and I think someone brought up doc- uh, uh, something something nerdy, and I was like, oh, I just... You know I love all my nerdy stuff. And then someone went, yeah, this is the dude who knew there were seven DVDs, 17 DVDs so- in Blink without having the options. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, that's me, that's me, that's me. Um, but yeah, so, like, really, really little mini references, and then it builds up to the end, and then there's a big, like, OMG, you're a, this... It could even be a Dalek. I mean, a Dalek, I think, will be a bit basic. Because I, I feel like the Dalek puppets with like the art stalks in the head. Yeah, no. Are, are like I was just imagining like a fu- a full size Dalek <laughs> the whole time, <laughs> just like in like really wow, like a crappy it is wig bigger and makeup. On the inside. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> time travel. I'm glad we haven't been. What was space that? travel? What was that? Time travel. <laughs> it's an Australian time Dalek. Travel. It's an Australian Dalek. Your shrimps on Barbie mate. will be exterminated. I'm so- oh, he's gone. He's gone. All right, I pushed it too far. I went too far. He he stormed off fast there. Good grief. He ran. He bolted, ladies and gents. He's gone. He has left the building. Crispy Pro is gone. Oh, he came back. That's disappointing. Do not talk about my shrimps anymore, son. <laughs> Why do you do sound like Captain Price? Do not talk about my shrimps. <laughs> where do we that's, draw the that's line, That's a really deep you Australian. draw the line where you need it. <laughs> All right, so th- there's our ideas. I feel like that was a bit undercooked. We just kind of had a few theories. I think we were more relying on the Mad Libs game. Yeah, let's do the Mad Libs. I'm, I'm blaming let's it on you. Let's do the I'm Mad Libs. You. This is your plan all along. This is your plan. You know, you you, you, uh, you held me hostage to make an idea. And the I didn't mastermind. Think of, but no, the mastermind. Yes, the spy mastermind. The spy mastermind. Just annoying is when you make a noise in the background while you're speaking, and that means you can't cut the noise out because you were in the middle of saying something. I just cracked my knuckles in the middle of speaking, and I know my mic, Mike's going to pick that up. Oh, so no. if we did, I'm very sorry, audio listeners. So, uh, oh, should we do our own Mad Libs, then read the audience ones? Is that how you yes, do it? Yes, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. so do you want to give everyone an ex- explanation of how this is going to work? Just like All one right. more like, general one. Ladies and gentlemen, okay, we are about to play Mad Libs. Troy is going to... Um, hang on, I need to find the website first. 
Uh, <laughs> you didn't get it up before we started recording? Come on, man. No, I no, I did. I just have a few tabs open now. Okay, here we go. Here we go. All right. So, there are a few Mad Libs to choose from. Um, so, we've got Mad Libs here, photo shoot, Mad Libs here, pizza party, Mad Libs here about a gingerbread man. And then all Troy would have to give me are things such as an adjective, a verb, you know, a profession, those types of things. And then we're going to say generate Mad Lib and it will give us this beautiful, cute little story. So, I thought we could relate it to Doctor Who, maybe throw us into the, into the mix, into the fun stuff. The absorbal off, you know, all kinds of little inside jokes. James Corden, oh. you know, Paul, Paul. Yeah, where is Paul? We haven't mentioned Paul for a while. Again. I know he's been he's been missing. He's been missing for a bit. So what <gasps> what um I'm gonna give you some story ideas. What ones um do you want? There's uh one about tacos. There's one about jobs. Uh, photo shoot, pizza party. <gasps> What's is anything ringing a bell? Pizza time. Pizza time, all right. You know it's that I pizza love pizza. Time. And actually, last night, I was watching all Tobey Maguire Spider-Man films. So, that's even more like, oh, excellent. appropriate. Excellent. Y- yesterday, I spent the entire day reorganizing my pop cupboard. And I mean mm-hmm. the entire day. Like, you would understand how long it takes to sort a cupboard that's full of pops. It's oh, I've, ridiculous. I've seen that cupboard. I've seen that cupboard. And I, yes, I can imagine it would take it, No, it's been completely day. resorted. It's been completely redone. I don't think Unreal. I've ever showed it on the podcast. I don't think I ever will. No, you haven't. But, but I've seen it. I've seen it with my eyes. It. You've seen it with your well, eyes. Yeah. through a screen. I'll show you. I'll show you after, yeah. after the episode. Okay, oh, I'll, sh- I'll show you after thank the episode. You okay. Oh, crispy yeah. exclusive! <laughs> crispy exclusive. Um, if you guys really want to, I'll show you it one day. Okay, one day if you're nice. I think pizza party then. So, uh, yeah. So it says fill out these questions to generate your own silly Mad Lib story instantly online, and you have to put in the following thing: uh, things plural. Um, so several things. I don't know how many things we yeah, have to put in. No, I'll, I'll I'll ask you these these things, and, then, and this can be your story, and I'll just generate it for you. Oh, right. Am I not going to type it on my screen as we go along? No, no, no. No, no, no. Oh, okay. We can go back okay. and forth, and then you can choose one for me. Oh, oh all right. Yeah. All right. All right. You all see right. where this is going? I see where this, this is going. going. I'll see. All right. all right. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So, give Troy, give me things plural. So, like a single thing that's in plural, basically. Like one basically. plural word. Uh-huh. Um, Slidine. Z. <laughs> Done. Easy. Adjective. Massive. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, a, a song title. Oh, gosh. I wonder what song you're going to choose. Sweet Child of Mine. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, it's been on top of my Spotify on repeat. I, I, can't, I can't not. Can't not. Um, a celebrity. Um, ooh, ooh. Andrew Garfield. Oh, Spider-Man do be on his mind. Spider-Man do be on my mind, as he often is. Um, a feeling. Epic. <laughs> uh, a verb. Running. Or run. Up that hill? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Running. Uh, or a, a, a place. Doctor Who related. It could be... Uh, excuse Plymouth? me? It oh, doesn't no, have to be. It doesn't have to be. We've got things, the Slovene okay. in there. It, it, no, it should be realistically, shouldn't it? <laughs> um, hmm. 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 Cardiff. Oh, we're cooking. Now we are cooking with gas. A f- yeah, now we're cooking. I was like, let's just name a really random place in England. Just went Plymouth. I just can see sorry, your face. I've like, never where, heard sorry? of that in my life. What? Um, food. <laughs> I mean, it's it's pizza party. I've got to say pizza, right? Surely, or is that going to no, confuse no, it? No, no, that might confuse it. That might confuse it. I feel like, I might, I feel like there's already funny. pizza at this party. You want more pizza? Yeah, put more pizza. There's, you right, can never have enough adding- pizza. Can I put more pizza? Like the actual words, more pizza. I have no idea. I'm going to chuck that in there. Um, pizza balls. Okay, another another things, plural. Yeah, I, I slid a little Doctor Strange reference in there. I want to make sure you noticed it. I, I appreciate it. Okay, I'll good, good, punch, good. I'll punch what's, my what's face thing? until yeah, the end of the for film. for three weeks. Yeah, great, um, go on. Uh, yeah, things, plural. Th- another things, plural. Um, sonic screwdrivers. Yeah, right. And finally, a person. I'm not going to go for the absorbal off because that's too basic. Because I know someone else, I think, did that in a response. So I'm not going to do that. Let's go with uh, Wilfred Mott. Oh, excellent. The king. All right. Are you ready for your story? I am ready for my story. Okay, here we go. (laughs) The first sentence is already funny. All right, here we go. Troy, just imagine. Imagine. um, Take it all in. Take it all in, all right? This is we're going to take you to another place. We're going to take you to the pizza party. Smell the fresh pepperoni. Smell the mozzarella. 
All right, you ready? Here we go. I just got back from a pizza party with Wilfred Mott. Can you believe we got to eat a massive pizza in Cardiff? Everyone got to choose their own toppings. I made pizza in Slovene's pizza, which is my favorite. Oh, that sounds disgusting. What? They even stuffed they even stuffed the crust with sonic screwdrivers. How <laughs> epic. <laughs> if that wasn't good enough already, Andrew Garfield was there singing Sweet Child of Mine. <gasps> I was so inspired by the music. Yo! I had to I had to go out um I had to get up out of my seat and start running. That is it. We yeah, did it. That's your beautiful arm, story. Stone. Running. <laughs> <laughs> I am straight to clarify, but Andrew Garfield is enough to make anyone question their sexuality. Okay, that's pushing it a bit far, but I do like Andrew Garfield a lot. So, if oh it, no, if I, he, I if completely he agree. If he turned up in my pizza hut and was singing "Sweet Child of Mine," I would never leave oh. it. I would never leave. No, absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, that's your cute little story on um your your pizza great visit Doctor with Wilfred Mott. Your great Doctor Who episode. You know, this be would fair. be an excellent Doctor Who episode. Do you know I'd what? A that. pizza party with Wilfred Mott would actually be like a really like good start to an episode, I feel like. That right? should be how the sixth year starts. <laughs> They're just having a pizza party and, and David Tennant just turns up and goes, what? What? Exactly. There you go. What are you doing here? There you go. And then Andrew there you Garfield's go. there too. Because, yes, he should be. He should be in every episode of Doctor Who. He should be the Doctor. Done. He should. Love you, Shooty. But Andrew Garfield for the Doctor now. That's it. That's the new campaign. It'll never happen. Well, that's a new campaign. All right. So, Crispy, I'll, I'll type up yours and then read yours out to you. So, do you want a story about tacos, jobs, a photo shoot, a pizza party, a gingerbread man, uh, about me, uh, or queen, or butterflies? Let's do um, Let's do the gingerbread man, please. Gingerbread man. Okay. First off, I need a place from you. Uh, let's go Gallifrey. You're going to do a much better job of a, of a Doctor Who one than I am. I can already tell. Adjective? Uh, adorable. Adorable. Uh, a verb? Slide. <laughs> Slide. This, is, this feels like I'm, I'm hosting Countdown. We have a consonant, please, and a, and a vowel. Uh, a consonant and, a vowel. and another vowel. I need a food. Oh, uh, fish fingers and custard. Fish thing. Oh, this is. You're really showing me up. This is. These are far better Doctor Who prompts. I just went Andrew Garfield, sweet child of mine. It's, <laughs> my, it's just right. everything in my I'll... brain at the minute, rather than Doctor Who stuff. I did put Wilfred Martin, Slidines, and Sonics in there though, so I wasn't. Yes, yeah, no, it was, it's still canon. It, yours is still canon. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, I need things plural. Uh, uh, the Atraxi. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, to, do you want to shoot that again? I don't want to put a Traxies. Uh, no, let's let's scrap that and let's just say Tard Tardises. Okay, Tardis is uh, profession. Temp from Chiswick. Temp from Chiswick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, a thing. Um, a shower. Shower. A color. Is that a thing? Orange. Orange, uh, celebrity or someone famous? James Corden, hands down. <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, I should have just not asked you that question and written James Corden yeah. in there anyway. I should have written him in I there. Just I just see what happened. I would have known anyway. Uh, an animal? A skunk. A skunk. <laughs> this is going to be ridiculous. Okay, you ready? Oh, please, take me is away. It- <laughs> Oh dearie, he's already oh, lost no. it. Oh no, this is oh, not. Oh dearie, <laughs> what have you done? Oh dearie, what have you done? What have you done? <laughs> well, Donna's oh, had no. a sex change. I'll say that much. If you're going for temp from Chiswick, I'll say that much. Okay, um, okay. Because Donna seems to have bit, bit, become a gingerbread man, so she's she's okay. changed she's changed gender <laughs> and also changed complete bodily structure. So here's your story. Okay, here we go. There once was a gingerbread man who had two tardises for eyes and a fish fingers and custard for a nose. <laughs> Oh my god. He always said, slide as fast as you can, you can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. One day he ran past an adorable temp from Chiswick, but they couldn't catch him. Oh no, it's him, the gingerbread man, right? It actually hasn't said the gender. Oh. So it could still just be Donna as Donna. There you go, Donna's in your story. Um he kept running until he passed a skunk, but they couldn't catch him either. Suddenly he came across a river near Gallifrey. How would he cross? 
then he saw an orange shower floating by. I'm so glad you didn't say golden. I am so glad you didn't say golden. I am so glad. That was so close to being caught then. That was so close. Can I even say that? Can I make that joke in a clean nah, podcast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I yeah, good? Yeah, you can. If you don't know what that means, yeah. please don't Google it. Do don't not Google, Google it. it. And he saw an orange shower floating by. He jumped on it. But it was actually James Corden, who just so happened to love cookies. Smiley face. <laughs> what is that? Wow. What have you done? Wow. What have you created? Wow. I, I, just, I That was horrifying. That, that was a horrifying. horrifying story. Okay, let's do All one right. together. Let's do one together where we bounce things between. One together? Uh, we're going to go yeah, for right. butterflies, purely because, I don't know, Life is Strange reference. I mean, I prefer Mass Effect now, but I still love Life is Strange. Let's go with this. So I'm going to bounce yeah, right. between each of us. I'm going to put words in that we both say, right? Okay. So who wants to start? Who wants to go first? Who wants you to be start, the first? You start, you start, you start, start. you start. Okay, so things. I'm going to go with um, Dalek eye stalks. Nice. Uh, okay, you need to give me an insect. Dream crabs. Dream crab. I'll, I'll do it singular. I think it wants singular. Uh, oh, okay. Verb for me, so I'm going to say um, uh, quip. Okay. Uh, you need to give a phrase, lyrics, or or a saying. Uh, okay. Uh, you make me feel like I'm living a teenage dream. All right. Now you're just like. <laughs> <laughs> now you're just letting your own mind in- infiltrate. You should be. You should be the more the more mentally solid of us. Clearly, for for the references here. But no, no. Your mm-hmm. your brain has been infested with Katy Perry now. Absolutely not. Um, Always. All right. Since 2008. Uh, so I need to give a color. I'm going to go for red, obviously. Uh, I need an adjective from you. Oh, aggressive. Ooh, so aggressively. No, aggressive. I just, yeah, never mind. I'm, going, I'm being yeah, stupid. Just aggressive. Uh, a food. Should I go for pizza again or is that boring? No, pizza. My, pizza, no, my brain is always pizza. Pizza's always great. All right, I need a person from you. Uh, Paul in brackets. Uh, uh, who's there a Doctor Who podcast number one fan okay who's there a Doctor Who podcast number one fan okay that's a long thing to read out uh, <laughs> I need to give an adject- adjective so I'm going to say um, morb <laughs> No, oh, let's go. <laughs> it's Morbin time. Morbius it's is Morbin not dead, time. everyone. It's not dead. Um, did I Absolutely show you the Steelbook? Not. I showed you that last week, didn't I? I'm going crazy. No, you. I've never seen the Morbius not- Steelbook. Did you get a Morbius Steelbook? Did I not show you? I was going to show it you. I must yeah, have quick. forgot last week. I got, I got. That's Crispy right. Pro. Crispy Before we Pro. finish this. I got the Morbius oh my gosh. Steelbook. Oh, oh, it actually looks very nice. It's very cool, isn't it? It's very cool. That's really cool. So enjoy video Damn. listeners. I bet Apple podcast listeners are really liking the look of this Steelbook. Oh, wow. He mentioned it again. Everyone take a shot. Yeah, everyone take a shot. Everyone, <laughs> everyone do it. Everyone take a shot. You all need to. No, um, it was a, it was on Zavi. Zavi had it, but it sold out like instantly. And I was like, oh my goodness, yeah. what happened there? And then it came back in stock like a couple weeks ago. And I was like, oh, and grabbed it before <gasps> it went out of stock again. So, you know, nice. people might not say Morbius is a good film, but the Steelbook was selling. All I'm saying. Uh, so then all we need is for you to give us a place. Uh, the, the top of Scarrow. The top of Scarrow, just the top of it. Yeah, just the just the top, the All north right. pole of Scarrow. So here we go. What's Last the story night, about? Sorry. Wait, what? What was the story about? What um, is the story about? Butterflies, the apparently. Oh, okay. All right. All right. I'm so ready. Here we go. Last night, I dreamed I was a morb butterfly with red splotches <laughs> that looked like Dalek eye stalks. I flew to the top of Scarrow. That works really well. With my best friend Paul, who's there a Doctor Who podcast's number one fan who was an aggressive dream crab. <laughs> we ate some pizza when we got there and then decided to quip. The dream ended when I said, you make me feel like I'm living a teenage dream. Oh my gosh. <laughs> these are great Doctor Who episodes, man. These, these are brilliant. Wow, these are brilliant. I really like that. I really I like that story. I think this just proves the BBC that, was that you and I are perfect to work on Doctor Who. Absolutely. We, we just came up with three brilliant... Um, Three scripts brilliant in, scripts in the past five minutes. Yeah, individually so. and together. Look at that. That is that is how we That's, work. That is how we you work. You make me and feel now- like living a podcast dream, crispy. <laughs> brilliant. Wasn't too bad. Um, was it? We have some. Bad. We have some from our audience, don't we? Okay, so here's what we've got. We've got uh, three responses of people who tried the Mad Libs and then four responses on the Spotify Q&A for what they do in their own episode. 
So we'll okay. stay on the Mad Libs. You read out all of the the Mad Libs like sentences, and then I'll look at the, the Spotify Q and A at the end of that. That sound good? Sounds like a plan, mate. Sounds like all an right, absolute talk, plan. Talk us through the answers for the Mad Libs. All then. right, go for it. Okay, our first one here is from uh, George on Twitter. He says, Today, a time traveler named Carrot came to our school to talk to us about her job. She said the most important skill you need to know to do her job is to be able to sonic screwdriver around a TARDIS Yaz. She said it was easy. I don't know. I feel like there's a list going on. Um, She said it was easy uh, for her to learn her job because she loved... To absorb a lot when she was my age. Don't, don't we all absorb a lot at some point in we, our lives? We have some. Um, yeah, mine was during puberty. Um, and that helps a lot. If you're considering her profession, I hope you can be near A, get a clom doctor. That's very important. Uh, if you get too distracted in that situation, you won't be able to James Corden next to a Donna. So there you go. I just feel, I feel sick like thinking about you absorb a lot during puberty. 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 Uh, puberty. I absorb a lot of during- <laughs> You've dabbled with puberty. Now meet the genuine article. <laughs> oh, oh boy. So, thank you very much, oh. George. All right, we have another response here from HeyJ2000. Hey, um, hey Jay. And I think, I think they're talking about Jackie Tyler. Here we go. <gasps> Today, I met the queen of Jackie Tyler's bedroom during a quick trip to Clom. I had left the house because I really needed to pick up a dozen impolite toclophane in order to repair my sonic lipstick. I wasn't planning on meeting her or I probably wouldn't have worn my fuzzy fez. I know most people would have bowed, but I forgot and decided to freeze cheerfully instead. (laughs) She smiled politely and then said, never eat pears. They're too squishy and they make your chin wet. That was a brilliant story. Well done, hey, Jay. That's brilliant. Well I like how I think we've that all gone really through different nice. games on the page. Like, I think all, like, we've not overlapped yeah, I think it's in the good. games at all. Um, can we just ask one question, though? The, the, the tweet said something like, was it, I met the queen of Jackie Tyler's bedroom. Yes. Is that Jackie Tyler or is there another queen involved in this situation? Who is the queen um, of Jackie Tyler's I think, bedroom? I think Jackie Tyler wanted Christopher Eccleston to be the uh, the queen of uh, Jackie Tyler's bedroom in that one scene. That's but as true. we know, Christopher Eccleston doesn't like the queen. So anyway. <laughs> oh, 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 double meaning. Here we go. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> I got jokes today. I got jokes today. You got jokes. You got jokes. You, you, you actually are funny for a change, question mark? I know. They Question mark? They, they said it couldn't be possible. Okay, so we've got one more, correct? Is this from YouTube? One one more from Scrambled59 over on YouTube. Hi, my name is Queen Victoria, but my friends call me Fantastic Banana. My, my favourite Harry colour- Potter film. Sorry. What? Fantastic <laughs> Fantastic it Banana? Really, yeah, it was, a really bad, it was a really bad joke. I'm so sorry. Fantastic God. Bananas and where's to find them? Um- <laughs> My favorite color is the color of screwdrivers, and my favorite thing to do is run. <gasps> my parents were a canine and doctor, which is why we lived in Torchwood. Makes sense, I guess. As you should. As um, you should. You probably know me from my TV commercial for chips. <laughs> Crispy chips, I hope. Oh, yeah. um, I'm, the one, I'm the one who says, you've dabbled with aliens, now meet the genuine article at the very end. That was Fantastic. beautiful. Well done. That is, that is Well done. Beautiful. Thank that you so beautiful. much, Scrambled59. So, yeah, thank you for your responses there. Um, and I believe we have some over on Spotify, Troy. We do. Before we do that, though, can, can I just get you to actually oh. fully try the genuine article quote, like in the accent? Oh, God. You probably can't do it, okay. but you, you've, you've kind of said it now, and you've... I want to actually hear you take it on. I, I need a... Tastes like chicken. I need to get kind of get into it. Tastes like chicken. You've dabbled with Ailey. I can't do it. This is going to suck, but I'm so ready for it. I'm so ready for it. You've dabbled with aliens. Now it's time to meet the genuine article. It's time? What is this, a game show? Uh, <laughs> no, what? it's just now there, meet. Oh, you said now it's meet. time to meet. Oh. It's fine. Well, it's fine. It's the crispy it's, version. Now it's time to meet the, the genuine Absorber article. Crisp. The Absorber right, Crisp. So. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Yeah, we've got some responses on Spotify with what you do for your dream episode of Doctor Who. So let's have a little look at these, shall we? Yes. So T Liz86 has said, Hear me out, 12, Donna, and Rory, the Vashta Narada, and the Sasha Dewan Master, says in the early 19th century London, written by Moffat, Chef's Kiss. I mean, I'd say that it's packed, but the centenary has got more (laughs) stuff happening on it it than my average Tesco shopping list. So I can't really say (laughs) that that's a bit overstuffed. 
So, yeah, go for it. 12, Donna, Rory, Vasha Narada, Sasha Dewan's master, 19th century London, written by Moffat, and a chef has to kiss someone. Oh, no, that's just an action, never mind. Oh, it's just a chef's <laughs> Yeah, I thought there was going to be an actual chef's kiss. I thought Gordon Ramsay was going to show up, or Ainsley Harriet. That'd be a great chef's kiss, you know? Mm. Mm, a little bit, little bit spicy. Spicy. Mm. Spicy, spicy. Uh, next up, we've got that one time, uh, the one time lady. Sorry, who? Wait. Oh my god. Oh my god. After I said it, after I said it, she's got the profile picture I mentioned last week, where it's Jody with a hand over her mouth, and I think it says "gay panic" on it. No, it says "gay shaking." <laughs> that must be what I was talking oh, nice. about. <laughs> I told you that picture existed. Brilliant. I really hope they brilliant. changed it to that just for the sake of what I said last week. But even if they didn't, that's oh, still brilliant. So, the one-time lady and her gay shaking have said, uh, I would put River and 13 in it because I think it would be cool to see them interact, and as the really threatening villain, I would put the Absorber off because, yes, I would put Paul in it as well. Oh, what a, nice what a great little fan. Paul what cameo. a great fan. Mm, love that. If we did a giveaway one-time lady, you'd win it. We'd, we'd send you many Doctor Who DVDs or something. You know, what, what, would, we, what would we send her? What, if, what, what have you got um, there? What are you looking for? Um, I have uh, a TARDIS here. <gasps> oh, I thought it acted as a bottle opener, but it doesn't. I don't know where that one went. Well, anyway. either way. Either way. <laughs> also, yeah, <laughs> like, like to re- reiterate the point I've made repeatedly on and off this podcast, that the one great failure of the Chibnall era, you might say there's more, I disagree, but the only real great failure of the Chibnall era, in my opinion, is that 13 and River never met. That is the greatest wasted opportunity in the history of Doctor Who. Until because- October. Don't say that. <laughs> literally from the moment she was cast the first thing i said was i can't wait for river to find out that her husband is now her wife that was literally what i said on the day jody was announced and i've stood by all this time and chibnall never saw it through and i will They'll never ever finish. truly be happy with him for that one because that is a yeah. failure in my opinion you know? fair enough fair enough would, would you do you not like river do you, do you disagree oh no no i just liked how her story ended how her story ended in the oh yeah it was perfect it? but you know, could have made but her forget. We could have a story. We could have a story. Because canonically, them, yes. she knows there's only twelve faces, but and then there's Capaldi, right? But like, yeah, but she knows how many faces there are. Yeah, and Capaldi was a surprise to her. But Jodie could have been as well. Maybe because she could have forgotten that she met her at the end of it. But you'd still get the interactions and still enjoy it. Where there's a will, there's a way with Doctor Who. There's where there's a will, there oh, is a way. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Lewis Louis Sutton Universe, who has been commenting every episode so far uh, recently, it's very cool. Thank As is Arthur very Botley, because we got him after this. Uh, but Louis has said, I'd love an episode based on the Roswell incident in 1947. I know it's been done before with the Dreamland animated serial, but hardly anyone has seen it, and it's kind of bad. <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> I, thought, I thought Dreamland was the best offering of Doctor Who in history, so I think you're being really, really <laughs> rude there. Now, for real, I've only, I only saw it, I think, the once when it first came out. I remember thinking it was fine. But I was a kid. I've se- I, I caught up. I got that DVD as well from the library when I started watching Doctor Who. And I was like, what oh, is brief. this? <laughs> oh, you poor soul. Well, what have like I stumbled onto? One of the first to? things you watched alongside Tenant's Regeneration was just Dreamland. <laughs> yeah, no, literally. I'm like, what is happening? Review that for an episode. We watched yeah, Doctor let's Who do Dreamland. That. Oh, let's grief. do that. Oh, I love um, that. But yeah, so that, that's fair. Yeah, a Roswell Instant one would be really good. That seems like a, a good amount of untapped potential, you know? And I'm not even sure if Dreamland is considered canon anyway. Is it considered canon? I don't actually know. Are you Googling uh, it's actually this? Considered, it's actually considered the series uh, five uh, uh, intro episode. Oh, really? Would you believe? Yeah. Intriguing. It's actually the series so opener. What, so Tenant regenerates into Matt Smith and then Tenant just suddenly shows up at Roswell? Yes, correct. Yes. Okay, that is okay. canonical. Okay, cool. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, so the final comment then comes from Arthur Botley who says, Oh, I've got loads. Great, give give us all of them then. Why have you only given us one? What's going on? <laughs> um, there's one idea I have for a 13-9 crossover where Yaz teleports onto mm-hmm. Nine's TARDIS and they go to Japan during the the Me- oh Meiji Meiji. I don't know how to say that. I'm very very sorry. Meiji Restoration. Uh, while Thirteen is on a planet and fights a shapeshifter. Sounds awesome, and I think Nine and Yaz would be interesting. I'd love to see what that would look like yeah nine says to yaz well if, if, if you're the doctor's companion why is it like you're from the north and she goes lots of planets have a north <laughs> be great be great some kind of reference there two northern actors together in doctor who i mean yeah that'd be that'd be perfect mental you know? mental not like jodie whisk is also from the similar area to to mind up gill but let's not talk about that um <laughs> it ruins my point but yeah so there's our spotify q a answer so thank you guys very very much for that uh, so that about sums up today's episode. I think before we wrap up, let's pick one comment. One comment. Oh, 
That's very um, nice. Which is actually one YouTube comment. This is one that I did reply to the day it comes out, but I really think this is worth just touching on very briefly. Um, it was a comment Absolutely. from DW Boy fourteen, and it comments on our discussion last week about you know how Sasha. Sasha Dawn's master could be good at the start of the centenary at the start of his life and then he turns bad through the events of that episode and then ends up being bad in the rest of the episodes we've seen him out of order yeah. DW Boy 14 has commented with Missy and Sasha could the timeless child and destruction of Gallifrey have been what turned Sasha Dawn's master bad again so could he have shown up warned the doctor she was going to die gone and had his own adventure on Gallifrey found out about the timeless ch- child and gone crazy as a result of that that is like that is next level thinking, Whoa. and I really Whoa. like it. Like I saw it on the on the day it came out. The comment was put almost immediately after, and I replied, "That makes so much sense because I really <laughs> like that. I really like In that theory." Capitals. Yeah, yeah. So, Damn. That's, that, that's our closing thought with you for today. So let us know what you think in the. In the comment section down below, I think our episode is a bit shorter today because we cut out a few minutes when we were looking up some things behind the scenes. And I think we, that's I think we're probably fine. about fifty minutes runtime. It's a shorter episode, but you know what? You Let's know talk what? about it's, some Thor. It's easier to edit. Let's talk about some Thor. Let's do it. Let's do a separate episode to talk about Thor. We've got time. We're going to go record a Thor episode. So, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching, listening, watching an Apple podcast. I'm going to start making that joke at some point. <laughs> Steve, that's not Steve Jobs. He's not here anymore. Whoever runs Apple, just, just make it happen, okay? Just make it happen. Stop laughing. Yep. I can see you trying to hold in a, a smirk. <laughs> stop. Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> All I can think of is that video of the Sonic dub where, where Shadow goes, it's so sad that Steve Jobs died of Ligma. Oh, my. Have you seen that video? Oh, dearie. <laughs> no, I feel like you may have sent it. I don't know. But ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up this episode of Who's There, a Doc 2 podcast. So thank you all very much for watching and listening. Crispy's laughing because this is a very funny get video. He's, he's just, he's having his own little moment over there. He's crying. What was the video? Uh, what was he cooking? We'll never know. Um, but what, <laughs> what was he cooking? <laughs> oh, references. If you get them, it's funny. If you don't, then we'll move on. No, seriously. Thank you all very much for listening and watching. We really appreciate it. We will see you all next week in episode 19. We're almost at the big 2-0. We're almost at the big 2-0. Big 2-0. We'll be talking big about two-zero. the most underrated episode of Doctor Who and Crispy Pro has tweeted out what is the most underrated yeah. episode of Doctor Who. Go reply to his tweet because he's going to make a video out of it. It was my idea, so I take all of the credit. Uh, but we're going to use the response on that as well to talk about in the podcast. Try and notice if there's a general trend for episodes people pick out in common. Um, and basically just give us some content because goodness knows we need it. But there we go. So thank you all very much for listening and watching. It sent the same video as Crispy again, so he's going he's to watch it again now. Um, it's sent twice. Uh, yeah, there you go. Fun fact. Uh, Dr. Eggman is bisexual. That's the clip. I'm um, just going to leave that there with absolutely no context. And if you know, you know. Beautiful. So thank you all very much. And we'll see you next Saturday with a brand new episode of Who's There? A Doctor Who podcast. We have got the Thor episode should be out for you already. And actually, if we get our acts together, we might do one for Miss Marvel next week. And maybe that'll be out before the next episode of, Doc- of the podcast. You know, maybe Thor, then this episode, so then Miss Marvel, and the next one. Who knows? We'll just try. You know, bonus episodes could be fun. Might be a lot of work, though. We'll try. We'll see what you we'll guys see. think. We'll see, see what you what guys think. But either way, thank you all very much for listening. Uh, Crispy, give us give us a, a closing comment for the end of the episode. Um, the the general idea of this episode um, of the podcast was just to get people in a bit of a creative mood. I want you guys to go home tonight and imagine your uh, your own imaginary Doctor Who world and the characters that would uh, live there. And uh, yeah, sleep well, be good, amen. Okay, laugh hard, run fast, yep. be kind. We'll see you all. Uh, That's it. We'll see you all next week. Alonzi. Alonzi, baby.